I don't know anything about this class. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this class is still ass. I'm not gonna lie. Um, what Thunderbirds yeah, I mean, do you know? Uh, no one. But okay, never mind. You got me. What's going on YouTube? Today I got another video for you guys. Um, I know that you guys have enjoyed all the Thunderbreaker content that I've been releasing and I've had a few people actually hit me up saying they want to start playing a new Thunderbreaker even if you are already down into the depths with it. And I'm actually going to release this video today to show you guys the state that Thunderbreaker is currently in. And later on in the video I'm actually going to be showing you guys a lot of tips and tricks to playing the class, make the class a little bit more in depth, stuff like that, and allow you to perfectly master everything that the shark thrower has. The last thing I'm gonna to touch up on is actually in the intro here, before we get into the tips and tricks, is going to be the myth, kinda, sorta, of is Thunderbreaker really just the finger breaker, the keyboard smasher? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. With my intro here, I recently watched a newer video uh, by Dookie who actually was doing a class analysis of all of the classes in the game. And I just thought this was an important thing to bring up because I know there's a lot of people out there, especially returning players, and it's really easy for you guys to just look up a video or a DPM chart to tell you what classes are good and bad. I think that this is bad for a few reasons. Number one being, it's not a PvP game mode or game in general. That right off the rip makes tier list way, way less relevant because it's not competitive. You're not trying to compete with other players. You are you really just want to focus on what you actually enjoy and playing classes that you actually like, the way they feel, their play style, the art style, that kind of stuff. And the second thing is tier list in this game are really focused on the absolute end game furthest point possible I and mean, comparing those classes at that point and we're talking here about like 0.5 percent of the population of maple story even at that point and i would say very very rarely not even me plan on getting to that point so that being said i mean i plan on getting really really far into the game but the tier list won't matter as much then and the very last thing I want to talk about is the reason why tier lists really shouldn't be looked at that much is there are so many classes in this game. There's like 50 some classes. And uh, in the intro, you can see both of them admitted to just right off the rip, not even knowing anything about Thunderbreaker, playing Thunderbreaker. But yet we're still going to we're still going to rank it and rate it. So it, it just amazes me. But focus on what you guys like and enjoy. We are a pretty unique class, so there's only a very, very select few amount of content creators out there with a lot of knowledge. I can put the Thunderbreaker Discord link in the description below if you want to ask them questions. They're a very, very nice Discord. They answer all of my questions when I was starting up, and I'm in there too, so I'll be able to answer any of your guys' questions if you guys have any. You guys can also join my Discord as well, um, and I'll be able to do coaching if you want. I'll sit in a Discord call with you for a few hours, show you how to progress, stuff like that. But without further ado, let's uh, before we get too far sidetracked, let's get back into the Thunderbreaker. The biggest thing to know is Thunderbreaker actually got back their 50% final damage buff that was taken away a while back. This is why my BA in the previous video was actually so much higher than it was before. We got a flat damage buff across the board as well as being able to combo abilities a little bit quicker. So that's really nice. TBs are in a really, really good spot right now. In terms of DPM, I keep saying this. I think we're going to be top of the board. I think that there's going to be very, very, very few classes in the game that will even compare to our DPS. Our burst was touched up on a little bit. I would still put it below average comparatively to the other classes. But again, I don't play this class for the meta. I play this class because it's just genuinely enjoyable to play. And I, I just love it. And any of you guys who also like it, just stick with it. It doesn't matter if a class is quote unquote good or bad in the meta right now. Every single class in the game besides maybe like Beast Tamer or 
Kana maybe can't solo Black Mage. That being said, I mean, you could fact check me. Feel free to do that as well if you want. Cause I don't really know too much about that. But my point is, is every class in the game with the right amount of gear and progress can can get to the point of being able to do all the content in the game. So there really is no need or worrying about that. RTBs actually finger breakers? The answer to this question is yes and no. When you see people post on Reddit or talk about it in general, they're going to tell you it's the keyboard smashing class, finger smasher, arthritis giver, all of these things that are really just, in my opinion, pretty, pretty far off in general. I think that in terms of spammy, yes, there's times where the class is really spammy, but it's mostly alternating between two keys. It's not a very high effort class in terms of, you know, Mercedes where you're spamming specific combos over and over again, or Iran where you have to get the certain combos with your keypad. It's not as bad as you think. And later on in the video, I'm actually going to be showing you videos of a few trading spots that I was doing, their rotations, and show you that you actually can get really good rates, especially with some more lazy training methods. And as far as getting the best rates go, um, getting that extra little bit of sweat in there doesn't increase it too much. So performance in terms of needing to sweat out of your mind it's not necessarily needed and with the remove of totems actually we used to be really 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 far down in the dumps in terms of our rates for mesos an hour and mobs per hour but we actually have a few things added uh like c wave and the fact that we're able to move around the maps a lot quicker than other people because of our high mobility that actually push us all the way up into way above average for being able to farm now so those are all good things. Bossing is really where the finger breaking comes into play. Mostly for your bossing, as I'm gonna show later on, is a lot, a lot of alternating between Annihilation and Thunderbolt or Annihilation and Gale, and then off cooldown throwing Shark. Um, so you're pretty much spamming those two for the entire duration. That being said, most bosses, you know, are gonna be below 30 minutes so it's not like you're gonna break your keyboard by doing that and if honestly you don't like that play style then Thunderbreaker is just probably not the class for you do I find it fun I find it extremely fun but as I said because we're such a high DPM class a lot of classes can uh, else in the game can play it a lot more relaxed and wait for their burst and then spam for that quick 10 seconds not me I like having you know a bit of hands like a lot of other classes don't need and showing that off with a lot of skill. And it's literally just about moving with title crash, dodging boss mechanics, and just finger mashing uh, Annihilation Thunderbolt or Annihilation Gale. So that's really what they want to talk about when they say the class is finger smashing. And it's, it's really only in bossing. Mobbing, super easy, super relaxed. You don't have to do anything too crazy. You can actually mob pretty lazy and get stuff done. Just to show you guys how relaxed and easy mobbing on this class can be, I actually have two BAs here for you guys. The first one is actually going to be in Last Horizon 2. As you can see, it's a three-platform map, and very easily you can just spam Thunderbolt and then Tidal Crash back and forth side to side, and you'll pretty much clear the entire map very low effort and you can actually get a very very high mobs per hour as I'll show you here in the actual BA end screen so right here was my 10 minute BA right off the bat 3.7 K mobs were defeated that comes out to about 22.5 thousand mobs an hour here so we got a good bit here um, not only that as you can see C wave killed about 200 mobs as it attacked 200 times and it one shots mobs so right off the rip you can already see the amount that C wave actually added to our mobbing and that doesn't actually give any more effort it's just free mobs the next location I got for you guys today is actually going to be VC3 this is going to be one of the most popular maps once you reach level 245 so it can actually be kind of hard to get sometimes but when you do it is well worth it 
Um, this is by far the least effort I've had to put on training on Thunderbreaker, and it is by far the highest output of mobs per hour that I've gotten. Previously, I was only getting about 19k mobs an hour, and since the introduction of C-Wave, I'm over 20k mobs an hour, and you actually don't have to rotate for loot with the Vacbet. This map, C-Wave does about 10% more mobs an hour for you, and it's a lot less spammy and a lot more alt jump mobbing like a lot of the other classes. With the removal of totems, bigger maps like this one and SSS2 becomes a lot more vital. And as you can see here, you find an easy way of mobbing. It's just a very simple circular pattern with alt jumps and then ascension jumping to the next platform. With the showcase of why I believe that mobbing on this class can become a little bit more lazy, Here's my examples of doing a little bit of bossing and showing you how it can actually be a little bit more spammy. As you can see in this Cygnus fight, it's pretty much just buffing and then spamming Annihilation Gale. This boss fight wasn't actually long enough, so you don't get through the entire phase of the buff running out. But after that, you would just switch into Thunderbolt and Annihilation. In the next fight, during Inferno Wolf, you're actually going to start off by mashing your multi-strike, and then by continuing by spamming your Annihilation and Gale. This is where the true spamming of the class actually comes into play, as you'll be doing that pretty much throughout the entire fight, with the exception of putting on your burst buffs and continuing your bossing rotation. Now it's time for the tips and tricks that I personally have for you as a aspiring Thunderbreaker main. The very first one that I'm gonna be showing you guys today, as you can see in this clip here, Thunderbolt actually has a hitbox that can go down to the lower platform. So maps like this, where it has platforms slightly below it, you can actually hit the mobs below. Another tip that I feel like will be useful for you guys is Thunderbolt actually doesn't have too high of a hitbox, but there's a slight way around this. By delaying your second jump and your double jump, you can actually hit some platforms that are too hard to reach. A nice addition to the class as of the ignition update is going to be this ability here called C-Wave. Most maps now, you're gonna to want to be training on all of the platforms besides the bottom platform as C-Wave will usually collect all the mobs. The next tip I have for you guys is actually gonna be one that's gonna help your mobility on certain maps. At the end of your up jump, you can actually cast Ascension to increase the length of your jump. Another helpful mobility tip is if there's a platform that is just barely too high to reach, you can actually cast Thunder and it will glitch you onto that platform and slide you across. Not only is Thunderbreaker great at moving vertically, but this quick maneuver can actually dodge you an amazing amount of boss mechanics. And it's as simple as just pressing tidal wave and then flash immediately after. I find this next one quite helpful, especially in bosses like Akechi or Damien where he slides from side to side, but it's pressing Ascension, Thunder, Tidal, and then flash. And you can move about halfway across the screen very quickly. The last type of movement that I wanted to show you guys was actually what we call flight. And it's basically you can spam Ascension and any other ability including Thunderbolt or Thunder Punch quickly in succession to keep your character suspended in air for a period of time. The last thing I wanted to show you guys today was actually an example of how you can manipulate your iframe on this class. Um, in the first clip as I'm showing here right now, you can see that by not pressing any ability after the iframe, you can't move for a period of time as you are in an invincible frame. But by pressing title immediately after, like shown in this clip here, you can actually cancel the iframe itself and be able to start moving again. During certain bosses, this might not always be available to you because title crash is needed to be used on the ground, but you also have the option of using ascension to cancel the iframe. As a little bonus tip, I also wanted to add this one in here because this is probably known as one of the most annoying bosses in the game, but Thunderbreaker actually has the ability to spam Annihilation and Flash in order to not be teleported by the Whale Boss and Princess No. I just want to give a giant thanks to all of you guys who stuck around throughout the entire video, and I hope a lot of these tips helped and gave you a better understanding of the current state of Thunderbreaker. If you guys liked, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And always, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.